Sunday we talked about something what was it that we talked about just in case if I don't remember sorry oh okay okay Med- we we're talking about meditation amen and I said to you that meditation in the world is about emptying your mind and relaxing your body did you remember that and that's what I said and then that is why certain sect certain sect they have to take you to the mountain or you go to a specific place or you sit in a specific way they, 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 they tell you the way you need to uh, position yourself to be able uh, to empty your mind and relax your body but when it comes to Christian meditation it's actually the opposite our meditation, we filled our heart, we filled our mind with the word of God, praise the Lord. We don't empty, but we feel. We take in the word. Amen? And then we concentrate upon the word. Amen? And that concentration, that feeding of the word is what produces result in our life. Remember what I said to you that meditation leads to what? Meditation leads to what? And habitation leads to what? Transformation. You see, when you, when you meditate upon the word, you develop a dwelling or a habitation in it. Amen? When you meditate upon the word, you develop a passion for the word. You, you get to dwell upon the word. You get to dwell upon the word. The word inhabits in you. And you inhabit in the word. And the result is a transformation of your life. Praise the Lord. A transformation of your life. So, every meditation, it leads to habitation. And it brings transformation. God said to Joshua, immediately the demise of Moses, he said, meditate upon the word day or night, day and night. He says, do not let the word or the book of this law, let it not depart from your mouth. He says, meditate upon it day and night. God said to Joshua, the secret of your success will be your meditation. And remember, God never changed. Whatever God said, 5 million years ago, 20 million years ago, it doesn't expire. The word of God does not expire. It is for that reason that you can take the word of God and produce result with it in any year, in any century, if you will have faith for it. The reason why the word of God will work for anybody that put it to work is because God watches over his word to perform it. Shout hallelujah. He watches over his word. That means God monitors. He monitors his word. So, the moment the devil wants to afflict you, and then you rise up on your feet and say, no, I cannot be afflicted because I am born of God. It is written, Whatsoever that is born of God overcomes the world. The moment you begin to utter those words, the forces of divinity is channeled towards you because there is a divine satellite that locates where the word of the Lord is being discussed, is being mentioned. And so as you begin to say, I cannot be sick, suddenly the satellite of Jehovah is focused upon you to zero in on you, to understand what is happening to you. Because just you are speaking the word is an attraction of God into whatever situation that you are going through. And when God shows up in every situation or in any circumstances, those circumstances must bow. Praise the Lord. So, the, just the speaking of the word, it gets something moving in the realm of the heavenlies, in the spirit. It is for that reason that devil does not want you, no matter what happens, to study the word. 
Devil does not want you to meditate upon the word. Devil does not want you to speak that word. Listen, if the devil have his way, he will destroy every Bible in the world. You know why? The word is our sword of the spirit. The word is our weapons of warfare. When the devil came against Jesus, Jesus was not armed with spears and arrows or, or guns or any other thing. He used the word. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord in your mouth is a dangerous weapon against the forces of hell. The word of the Lord in your mouth. And so when God said to Joshua, meditate upon the word dwell upon the word then you will make your way prosperous that's what God said he said you will make your word your way is prosperous and then in Deuteronomy 32 when Moses was talking to the children of Israel he said for you the word is not futile he says for you the word is not futile he said the word is your life if the word is our life and we don't have the word then what kind of life do we have? Think about it. If the word is our life, and then we don't have the word, what kind of life do we have? Paul, writing to Timothy, told Timothy to meditate upon the word. Paul, writing to the Philippian churches, told them to meditate upon the word. Paul, writing to the Colossians, he says, set your heart upon the word. Set your heart. Moses said to them, set your heart. Amen. Meditation does not come by carelessness. You didn't hear what I just said? Meditation does not what? It doesn't come by assumption. You have to create the time for meditation. You have to create the time because meditation requires you spending time with the word and in the word and with the Lord. Did you get that? With the word, in the word, and with the Lord. That's what meditation is all about. Meditation is not about sitting down and um, daydreaming. No, that's not meditation. That's not meditation. Meditation. Meditation is a powerful tool. It can reveal secrets to you. It can give revelations to you. Meditation has blessed me so much. Wow. I can spend two, three hours. Listen, I spend more time in meditation than in prayer. Amen? Did you hear what I said? I spend more time in meditation than what? In prayer. You zoom into the word in meditation. You zoom in into the word. Let's read Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. We are reading from verse, or we are reading verses 8 and 9. Philippians chapter 4. Are we there? From verse 8. Finally, finally, brethren, Paul closing his writing. He said, Whatever things are true, shout hallelujah. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure. Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, if there is anything praiseworthy, meaning if there is something to praise about, he says, he says what? He says what? Meditate. I had to think about these things, right? Such things. But he says, meditate on these things. So, Paul gives us 
the characteristics of things we should meditate upon. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any praiseworthy, meditate on these things, verse 9. He says in verse 9, the things, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. Huh. Should we go over that again? Everybody read verse 9 together. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. This do and the God of peace will be with you. Is that your Bible? He didn't say the things you had from your parents. No. It's not what he says. Paul says, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. He says, whatever you have heard, whatever you have seen, whatever you have learned, he says, these things, these things, these are the things you should do. If you have learned anything, if you have received anything, if you have heard anything, if you have seen anything in me, he said, this do. He said, this do. Stay with these things. Stay with these things. Praise the Lord. You know why? In Matthew 10, 25, Jesus said, it is enough for a student to be like his teacher. And you don't become like your teacher until you meditate upon the teachings of your teach teacher. Until you follow the doctrines of your teacher. Come on, let's open to Matthew 10, 25. Listen, this is Jesus speaking to us. Meditation is so important that without it, you will live a superficial Christian life. Seriously speaking. Jesus said, Matthew 10, 25. I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. It says, Students are to be like their teacher. Full stop. Students are what? And so, 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 you, you, Jesus is the one speaking. Now, your pastor is your teacher. And the Bible says you should be like your pastor. You should be like your pastor. You should be like your pastor. Praise the Lord. Is that in your Bible? Matthew 10, 25. And it says also that slaves or servants must also be like their master. Is that your Bible? So the question is, who are you like? Who do you resemble? Whose image do you carry? You can come to church and not be like your pastor, then something is wrong. Do you, do you get it? Something is wrong. Paul says, if you have learned anything, so if you are not like your pastor, you have not learned anything. You have not learned anything. If you are not like your pastor, you have not received anything. If you are not like your pastor, you have not seen anything. Jesus said it is sufficient. It is enough. If you become like your teacher. If you become like your teacher. The boldness of faith, you should carry it. The boldness of grace, you should carry it. You don't come to church to be who you are. You come to church to become who God wants you to be. Are you hearing me? If you are truly in a spirit filled church, who you used to be should be dissolved and you become who Christ wants you to be. Because the word of the Lord builds us up and gives us an inheritance. The word of God makes us like Christ like. Do you know what meditation can do in your life? 
you know, when we talk, when Paul said, meditate on these things, Paul said, restrict your meditation. Restrict your meditation to these things. I want us to read what Paul wrote to Timothy. Sorry, before that, let's read, to, let's read Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Before we get to Colossians, I want to show you something in this Philippian from New Living Translation, the verse 8. Just hold on. Philippians 4, 8. The Living Bible. New Living Translation. He said, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing Paul says to them. In New Living, the same verse, Philippians 4, 8. He said, fix your thoughts on what is true. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Fix your thoughts. Do you understand what it means to fix something? You permanently place it there. Are you hearing me? It's not about today, you are wobbling today, you are thinking today. He said, fix your thoughts on what is true. And we know that there is only one thing that is true, and that is the word of God. And Paul says, we are not just to look. We are not just to about think. He said, fix your thought on it. Stay with it. Make a permanent fixture. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Praise the Lord. This is one of mommy's favorite scriptures. It's a teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 17, and whatever you do in word or deed, whatever you do, whatever you do in word or deed, do all, do all, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Praise the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. How can the word of the Lord dwell in you richly if you don't meditate upon it? You see, the meditation causes the word of God to dwell in us richly. As we have this service now, you are making your notes and you go home and you don't read it. And you don't read it. There is a problem. The problem is that you will forget what you have heard a day or two. But if you meditate upon it, it will register in your spirit. Scriptures don't register when you read it once. No. Scriptures don't register when you read it once. It does not. Praise the Lord. Scriptures register when you meditate upon it. I have a board. I would like to demand, can you bring me that my board, please? And, oh, today the video is not working. The devil is a bad devil. And this, oh, 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 oh. Say God is good. I have a wonderful man drawn there. If you don't like it, please, I'm not the one that drew it. But if you like it, I'm the one. Praise the Lord. I want to show you something about meditation. And those here will not see it. Okay? Can, can you all see this? Can everybody see this? You need to see this. You need to see this. Praise the Lord. He said, let the word of Christ dwell richly. Let the word dwell richly. Let the word dwell richly. Amen. 
How does the word dwell richly? Hold on. You see the way we are right now in church. You are hearing the word. Right? Let me tell you what that word is. Don't just, just follow me. Don't look at the drawing. Okay? All that you are hearing now, all that you are hearing now, let me tell you what it is. Did you see that? What is it? All the word I'm teaching to you, preaching to you, it is nothing but, can you see how tiny it is? You see how tiny it is? So, it is very easy for it to be blown away. Isn't it? It is very easy for it to be overtaken, isn't it? So, whether I preach to you for two hours, three hours, it doesn't matter. It will register in you as nothing as this. A dot. God has given to every man a measure of faith. A measure of faith is also but what? A dot. Okay? So, we are in the church and you are listening. You are making notes. And this message is uploaded. It's on YouTube or Facebook. This message. And then after service, listen, after service, when you go back, maybe this evening, maybe tomorrow, and you carry your notes, the moment you carry your note and begin to read this, see what happens. What has happened? What has happened? It has gone from a single dot. It has expanded. Right? When you now spend time, you know what they tell you in school, do your homework, do your homework, do your homework, right? When you now put that word you are hearing today from your notebook and you put it to work, you put it to work. How do you put it to work? Paul said to them, what you have learned, what you have received, what you have seen. He says, these things do. And then you say, well, I'm going to walk and be like my pastor. Or you can say, I'm going to be and talk like Jesus. Praise the Lord. Because your pastor is under Christ. And so when you are like Christ, you are like your pastor automatically. Praise the Lord. And then when you say now, from meditation, you go to application. Something happens. Something happens. Suddenly. What has happened? It has expanded in you. The word has expanded in you. And then, when you now apply it and you begin to tell others to apply it to. You begin to tell your friends from your application you are now an evangelist. Are you hearing me? Suddenly this thing begins to spread. It begins to spread in you. It begins to spread in you. You may not know the entire Bible, but you are living the few that you have gotten. You have gotten you, the few that you have received. You are walking in it. And so suddenly, you talk the word. Why do you talk the word? Because you are living the word. Why are you living the word? Because you are meditating upon the word. Praise the Lord. And so you become inseparable from the word. You are closely knitted with the word. You know, like one translation put is that you are absorbed into the word. You are absorbed into the word. Are you hearing me? And so the word begins to gain root in you. Gain root. Let me, let me show you. Um, praise the Lord. Mark chapter 4. Mark 
Mark chapter 4. I want us to read from verse 15, 14. Are we there? Mark chapter 4, verse 14. The sower sows the word, and these are the words by the these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. Verse 16. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Like the way the word is coming now, everybody is excited, isn't it? You are receiving the word with gladness, praise the Lord. But you wouldn't know if you have a stony heart or not. But you are receiving the word. But there is something that happens to those that receive the word. Even though they receive it gladly. Even though they receive it with joy. Verse 17, the Bible said, And they have no root in themselves. Is that in your Bible? And they have no root in themselves. And so endure only for a time. The word you hear this morning, if you don't have root in yourself, it will only endure for a time, for a season, for a moment. It will not produce. And they have no root in themselves. And so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the world's sake, immediately they stumble. Have you seen people after this service? Why are you behaving like this? After all the message you have had, why are you doing that? Have you asked such question before? It is because those people lack the foundation of the word. The word is not written. Even though they received it, even though they clapped, even though they shouted in church, but if there is no foundation for the word, if there is no foundation for the word, that word will not endure. That word will not last. Do you know that the situation I'm just demonstrating to you is worse in the negative? It's worse in the negative. Let me show you something. Now, I'm going from the left. Right? Um, Levi, come here. And Bright, come. Praise the Lord. Let's say that Levi and Bright had an argument. They had an argument. They, let's say you ate his meat, which he didn't ask you to take. Then he asked you, and then you said, what is it? Is it not only meat? Are you hearing me? And then Bright got angry. And both of you argued about it. And as you people argue about it, out of anger, you people left. Okay? That argument, this side, what is it? It's a dot. They've just had a misunderstanding. And then they've gone. But it is a dot. When Bright goes back, I said the other day, Levi carried my, he carried my soup also. The other day, he carried my water also. <laughs> so, what has happened? And you know that a devil, the devil is a master photographer. The devil now, we feed him Specially, all the fault of Levi. He said also, the other day, he took my pen. The other day, he's supposed to give me a microphone on time. He didn't give it to me on time. He said, the other day, I asked him to give me something he refused. He said, he said to himself, it's getting too much with Levi. And I'm going to show him I'm not a fool. The devil said, go ahead. Are you hearing me? 
Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. He is meditating on the wrong thing. And the devil is happy because something is going to happen out of that. But what is going to happen is not praiseworthy. What is going to happen is not a good report. And the devil is a master planner. Levi does not know what Bright is thinking about. And so, unconsciously, the following day, he just walked into Bright's office, his table, he saw his water, he just took it. <laughs> and Bright said, today is today. Was it the water? It wasn't the water. What has happened? He has been in meditation over Levi. He has been in meditation over Levi. And the kind of slap that Brett will give Levi, Levi will start wondering, is it a thunder? How can water generate such a slap? You know the one uh, uh, Will Smith gave to Chris Rock, the case is still on. Do you understand? And so, let me say, I came out, I said to him, I said, hey, what's the problem? Look at his version. Sir, I took just his water and take, uh, I took his water and he slapped me. That's his version, right? What he didn't know is that this guy has been on assignment. Then I asked, listen, he has given me his version. I asked Bright, what happened? Bright said, sir, every time Levi kept, kept, kept insulting me, keep challenging me. And Levi said, it's only water. He said, it's not about the water. Every time, the other day you ate my meat. The other day you took my soup. The other day you carried my notebook. The other day you took my pen. The other day you took my gary. The other day you took... And, 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 hello, are you following him? And, and Levi said, but, 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 pastor said love covers multitude. He said, shut up! Love covers what? So, why don't you walk in love too? Do you understand that the fault of Levi has dwelt richly in bright? It will produce offense. It will produce bitterness it will produce anger and the bible says the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of god and that's why paul said to the Ephesians, he said be angry but what sin not you know why the moment you dwell upon this area it will show on your body i have noticed that listen I have noticed that people that are very angry and bitter and offended, they look older than their age. Go and check. Go and check. I, I, I have seen them. I have seen them. They look older than their age. And they are full of wrinkles. And they have health issues. You know why? The word of God produces grace. The word of the devil produces affliction. Are you getting it? What started with a simple matter, the devil has expanded it. So when Paul said, let the word of Christ dwell in us richly, let the word dwell in us what? Richly. It means that instead of us meditating on the wrong thing, we should meditate. I said to you, I spend more time in meditation than in prayer. There are people also that pray more and meditate less. But you see, 
you can come to a point. You know, you know, people that are afflicted with cancer, God, God help them and heal them. At a point, they would say that the cancer has taken over the whole body. Right? They say that the cancer is, is it has spread. And very often, in most cases, it kills the people. So, the cancer carries the power to kill as it spreads through the body of the person. As it spread. What do you think that the word of God has the power to do as it spreads in you? Think about it. Think about it. If cancer can kill a life and its affliction, and Moses said, the word is your life. He says, set your heart upon the word. Ah, Set your heart. Paul says, meditate only on the things that are true. You know why? The other way around, we produce bitterness, anger, offense. Praise the Lord. There are things, see, there are things you shouldn't hear for your own good. I have, I have a way of life. If you are discussing something that is not relevant or profitable, if I'm there, I will walk away in a manner where you will not know. I will stay away from it. You know why? My ear is anointed. Seriously. My ear is anointed. If you are discussing something, let's say, if you are discussing something or gossiping something about, about me or about somebody, even if I come close and hear it, I will stay away from it. You know why? Why should I burden myself with an ungodly report? Listen. If I hear you and you are talking about me, I won't come in and ask what are you talking about. I will stay away. You know why? It is safer for my spirit that I didn't hear it. Some people will just say, I overheard them talking. I overheard them. Remember, in the first place, in the first place, if you steal other people's discussion, it will hurt you. Did you hear what I said? No, did you hear what I said? There are people that are good at it. They will tiptoe when they hear something. And they will put their ears to the door. Uh -huh. Are you hearing? Mm-hmm. Mm mm -hmm. And now in the process, in the process, they had something. They had something. A man of God shared something. He was asked to come and pray for a dear person in the hospital that was very sick. The man of God went to pray for the person. And this pastor, I had it from him directly because he's a friend of mine. Praise the Lord. And he said, as he was praying for the person, you know the way they will demarcate a place in the hospital with curtains, with this roller thing. And so while the pastor was praying, the other side of the curtains, the relatives were discussing who would buy the coffin if he died. Did you hear what I said? The man of God was praying that God will heal him. That God will deliver. And the person heard the relatives arguing who will buy the coffin when he dies. Whose report do you think that he will believe? No, whose reports do you think that person will believe? 
sometimes words are more powerful than the affliction. Did you hear what I said? It is for that reason when you have a problem, if you don't have a faith-filled person, don't, don't invite anybody. When you have challenges, if you don't have anybody that is filled with the word of God, don't invite anybody. Are you hearing me? It is better for you to be alone with God than to have people that will wreck your faith. Praise the Lord. Thank you, gentlemen. Are you hearing me? So, you have meditation here. You have meditation here. But, they have different consequences in your life. Different. And you know what? The devil tried to feed you on this side. On this side. On this side. In Colossians chapter 3, it talks about teaching others, educating others. Are you hearing me? You come to a point where you become an educator. You tell people, many of you, you have not gotten to a point where you educate others. You will see what is not right. You will overlook it. Because you don't think it's your place to correct it. And because you don't want to be called a bad name. So you will see what is wrong. You will see what is wrong and you overlook it. You don't know who you are. You are a hypocrite. When you do that, praise the Lord. You are a hypocrite. And I want to believe that from today, you will change in Jesus' name. Amen. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonition, teaching and admonishing one another. One thing about meditation is that it forces you to be a teacher. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Did you hear what I said? One thing about meditation is that it forces you to be a teacher. I, something happened last week. I think last week, yeah. Yeah, it's last week. I was asking where, where is Tunde? Listen, I was asking where is Tunde? Do you understand? And then they say he's in the bungalow. I said, call him. And then John called me. He told John that he's on the roof because they are changing the roof. He told John that he's on the roof. And so John called him again. When I said, call Tunde, I need to see him. So he was called. And then he was coming. And then John asked me again, where were you? He said he was on the roof. And he was smiling. And he was coming. He said he was on the roof. And... I think, Bright, were you there? And I stopped. And I asked him, I said, Tunde, how is it fun for you to lie? I said, why is it fun for you to tell a lie? You were not on the roof. The carpenters are the ones on the roof. You were not on the roof. He shows us how the enemy has gotten a hold of many of us in many ways. He meant it as a joke, but it was a sin. And I asked him, were you in the roof? It was then it dawned on him. And I said, the problem with that, you may not be able to repent about that sin. So it stays registered in your life. It was a joke. And many of you joke with things like that. And because you consider it a joke, you don't think it is a sin. But there is no joke in the realm of the spirit. Are you hearing me? Some of you will deny some things. You will accuse of what you are not sure. 
you will speak of what you don't understand. And you think it's a joke. And you say you are just joking. And I said to him, I said to him, since when did sin become a joke in our life? That's what Paul is talking about. Teaching others and admonishing others. You come to a point where the word of God has saturated you. Now, out of you, it flows like a river. Teaching and correcting others. Teaching and correcting others. I'm sure most of you have heard that this lady, Hosinachi, is dead, right? The lady that sang Ekweme, right? And before that, another gospel artist was dead also, right? And then before that, another pastor was dead also. And before that, another pastor was also dead. And these things, you know, they are flooding it in the social medias. It appears suddenly that God's people are just dying anyhow. And while I was meditating, see, the Spirit of the Lord, listen to this, this is important. The Spirit of the Lord told me, said, you have to be careful with these informations. You have to be careful with this news. He said, because what the enemy is trying to do is to sow fears in the life of my people. That God's people can die anytime. And God said, be careful. How you handle these informations, be careful. How you deal with it, be careful. Because if it enters into you, it will be a seed. Are you hearing me? And I felt the Spirit telling me, he said, everybody's relationship with God is personal. Don't use anybody to judge what will happen to you because you are not in that person's shoe. Because you are not that person. And God said, looking on to Jesus. Looking on to what? Jesus. The author. And what? The originator. The originator and the perfecter. And the moment, the moment the spirit minister to me, I stopped reading anything about that in that case, I stopped. Pop, I overlook it. Pop, overlook it. Are you hearing me? You need to be careful. Death is not a friend. Death is not a friend. Death is an enemy. Don't market death. Deaconess Calista. Uh, lost the mother last year. They did a burial and all that. Praise the Lord. And then she, when she came by, she put the picture now on her WhatsApp profile. Are you hearing me? And then I've seen it. I, I, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. But I didn't say anything. One day, she called me on WhatsApp. And as she called me, it was that picture that came. And the Spirit of the Lord just flagged me. He said, this shouldn't be what you should be looking at. It shouldn't be what you should be looking at. You should be looking at the living, looking at Jesus. And immediately, I picked the fire to that deaconess. Don't do this again. Don't call me with a picture of a dead person. Do you understand what the enemy is doing? The enemy is marketing. You don't get it. No, you don't get it. If you want to honor your mom, honor your dad, when he's alive, when she's alive, put the picture there. That's a great honor. When the person is there, are you hearing me? No, 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 no. You, you people don't understand this thing about meditation. And that is why many are in trouble. Many are in trouble. You don't get it. You don't get it. Meditation it's about winning hearts. Either the word of God will win your heart or the world will win your heart. So, there is no neutrality. There's no neutrality. And thank God for her. The moment I spoke to her, she quickly, immediately removed that picture. It was for her own sake. We don't understand what damage is that. In the book, in the book that we are going to release this week in Easter, service the path, your pathway to divine health. Praise the Lord. 
The book will be released this week. Shout hallelujah. I said something in that book. When God has called his people out of Egypt, don't go back to Egypt. And I said in that book, if you stroll or wander yourself to Egypt, you may carry affliction. And when you come back, when you come back, listen, when you come back into Zion, you will still be sick. Because that sickness did not come from Zion. You went to Egypt, you visited Egypt, you carried it in Egypt, even though you are back in Zion, you will still be afflicted. Because you are not supposed to go back to Egypt. Are you hearing me? You are not supposed to go back. We don't understand. The devil is a powerful marketer. What do you think advert is? No, what do you think advert is? Or you don't think? You think it's just there are billions and billions and billions. They advertise Panadol. They advertise... Um, please, tell me. Paracetamol. Toothpaste. Thank you. And then malaria tablet. What is it? Amala. Amala. Sorry? Amate, whatever it's called. So, listen. You are not sick. Here you are watching TV. <laughs> they show you Panadol. They show you Paracetamol. They show you Amala. They show you... <laughs> Praise the Lord. They showed you. They showed you. And then on a set day, you, you had a symptom. It was a symptom. Symptom of malaria. What will come to your mind first? Say the truth. What will come to your mind first? You know why? <laughs> you have stored that information somewhere in your hard disk. And so, when there is this, you see, meditation, Paul said, just what is praiseworthy. Paul says what is true. Paul says what is of a good report. Don't dwell on it. Don't dwell on it. It will register. And when it registers, it will destroy you. Are you hearing me? It will do what? Destroy you. Do you? Oh, maybe many of you have no high experience. I want to give you an assignment. Try and meditate upon the word of God for like half an hour. Hey, are you hearing me? Do what? Meditate upon the word of God for half an hour. Do the experiment tomorrow. When you wake up tomorrow morning, meditate upon the word. You will see what will happen in your life. If you don't know what to meditate upon, take John chapter 1 verse 1. Read to 5. Meditate upon that. For half an hour, you will see the kind of person you will be that day. Those that meditate upon the word are true worshippers. Are you hearing me? I sing because... I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes, his all the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. His eyes is on the sparrow. And I know, yes, Lord, you watch it over me. I sing because I am happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes is on the 
was Paru. And I know, oh yes, he watches over me. I don't know what you meditate upon, but this is the glorious things to meditate upon. Are you hearing me? The word will afflict you, but the word will heal you. Praise the Lord. The word, meditating upon the word. <laughs> Do you notice when people lose very dear one that is close to them? Are you hearing me? They can meditate upon it so much, so much so that that can kill them also. They were not sick. Nothing was wrong with them. They meditated upon it so much they became a victim. They died. I shared with you before and I will say it again. A story about a Canadian woman, white girl. She was raped by a black person black person or black persons and she got so angry and cried and cried and cried to the point her hand became like this disabled and she swore to hate blacks she swore to hate blacks she meditated upon the things that happened are you hearing me and then she came to a program in Toronto. We were in that program. And the power of God, God sent a black person to go and pray for her. The people she has chosen to hate. God is a humorous God. By a black person, she got afflicted. By a black person, God said, go and pray. By the three man sinned. By the same tree, the cross, man was made righteous. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And then the, this black guy went to pray for this woman. As he was just praying. Simple prayer. And the hand was stretching out. And they see a miracle happening. They called her to the stage, to the pulpit. And she was weeping. And the hand was getting here till it became normal. Everybody was watching. Nobody understood why she was weeping. Why are you weeping? She said, she said, she never knew this would happen to her. She said she was not born like this. Something happened. She became like that. And she swore to hate black people. And she said, here I am. A black person is who God is using to pray for me to get healed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't close the door on God because you are hot. Don't close the door on God because you were offended. Don't close the door you don't know this God. Praise the Lord. You don't know this God. Does any of you remember who is called Dina in the Bible? A lady called Dina, or you can call her Dina, or whatever that suits you. But Dina is Dina, right? A daughter of Jacob. You remember? Genesis chapter 34. Something happened. Something happened. The Bible says she went out. Why she went out? Why she went out? Somebody raped her. Oh yeah, it's in the Bible. Read it. Somebody raped her. And then the Bible said the person that raped her and the father came to see Jacob. 
her father. And they said, okay, we have done a wrong thing, but we would like to marry her. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 34, we don't have time. I just want to share something. The Bible said that Jacob had it and held his peace. Right? The children were not around. <laughs> the Bible said when the children came back from the farm, <laughs> Jacob now told them what happened. <laughs> Listen. Praise the Lord. I want us to read verse 7. Genesis chapter 34 verse 7. Are we there? Genesis chapter... Everybody can find Genesis. Are we there? Genesis 34 verse 7. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter a thing which ought not to be done praise the Lord Jacob had it he had his peace his sons had it they were angry they were vexed let me tell you don't fall for the trap of the enemy are you hearing me don't fall for the trap of the enemy the Bible said, Simeon and Levi, they planned a revenge. You meditate on something, so you plan your own way of getting even. Meditation leads to revenge. Only the meditation of God's word leads to transformation. But if you meditate on the wrong thing long enough, it will position you for a revenge. And God has said, vengeance is mine. We are not to take the place of God when people wrong us. Let them go. And the Bible said, Simeon and Levi, they devised a plan, a strategy to get even with their sister that was raped. And they said to them, if you want to marry our daughter, very simple. All the males should be circumcised. Very easy. If you're circumcised, then you can marry. And they believed them because the Bible said they deceived them. Meditation on the wrong thing leads to deceit. You will think, you know, Bright was thinking about something about Levi. Levi didn't know it. And Levi was still walking, you know, freely. Listen, you see this thing here. You see this thing here. It is killing more people than Corona. Are you hearing me? This is destroying more marriage than the devil. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, a man speaks. So you have two types. Where do you speak from? No, where do you speak from? Do you notice that people snap sometimes? They snap towards some people. No matter what it is, they just snap. You know why? It is, if, if I spend time with you, and we talk. I can tell you what is in your heart. The way you respond to people is an indication of what you have in your heart for them. Seriously speaking, many of us don't get it. Remember the course we did on character development, countenance. What did I say that countenance is? What did I say countenance is? Countenance is an uncontrolled exposure of your mind, depending on what is there. Are you hearing me? Your countenance is a revealer of what is stored in your heart towards your person. Boy, meditation is deep. That is why God said to Joshua, stay with the word only. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. If you want to be successful, if you want to prosper, 
I say to you today, if you want to prosper, if you want to be successful, stay on the meditation of the word. We prayerize too many things. Did you hear what I said? We prayerize too many things. No continent pray as much as Africa. And no continent is as undeveloped as Africa. Go and check. Go and check. Go and check. You know why? Somebody can attend prayer meeting and go home and fight with their wife after. And say, Lord, forgive me. You say, what is wrong with that? Wickedness. You meditate upon it. The African problem, African problem has nothing to do with the land or geographical place of Africa. Pray for Africa. I'm telling you. Pray for Africa. Pray. For Africa. We pray so much. We fast so much. We suffer so much. Are you hearing me? Pray so much. Fast so much. Suffer so much. What is the problem? The problem is here. Are you hearing me? The problem is what? Here. Somebody told me a story. He lives in Holland. He said that they wanted to do whitewash. You know what, what they call whitewash? Money washing. This fraud they do. He was sharing the story with me. He said, um, he said they wanted to do whitewash with a, a man, a white man in Holland. They told the man that we, they need to buy the chemical to wash it. You know what they do? They do something, something, and it will come out like money, true money, and you will believe. So they did it, and the thing came out. The man gave them some money to go and buy the chemical, wanting to believe. So they went, bought the chemical, and then they did the water, did the thing, and euro came out. And the man was like, what? This thing works. Now, they told the man, they told the man, you know, we need to buy chemical. We want to wash 10 million euros. 10 million. <laughs> they told the man they just need about 100 and something thousand euros to buy the chemical for 10 million euros. <laughs> he said the man looked, <laughs> looked at them. And ask them, where will I keep it? <laughs> 10 million euros, where will I keep it? What will I do with it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. The man told them, <laughs> it's too much. I'll go, for, I'll go to prison. <laughs> they said, no, 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 we can do 1 million. He said, where will I keep 1 million euros? He said, he will go to prison. The man told them, please, he's even afraid. He doesn't want to do any. That they should just carry the thing and leave and develop. What will a black man say? Thank you. What will a black man say? Just th that question alone. He said, only 10 million. My friend, my friend, my friend, take advantage of opportunity. Huh? Even a Christian will tell you, that God said you should take advantage of opportunity when it happens. He said, this is my time. The Lord has answered us. This is not in vain. Do it. He said, you know, I will pay tight in church. Does God receive stolen tight? He doesn't. He will never receive it. He will never receive it. If you steal money in this ministry, don't pay tight, please. Keep it to yourself. Are you hearing me? Because I don't want to be afflicted with you. Do you know what happened to people that were in the same boat with Jonah? 
I never forget that scripture. Jonah bought a ticket and entered the ferry, entered the boat for escape. What happened? God's anger came. Those people lost everything they had. So please, please, eh? this is on transmission. Please, if you ever steal money, don't pay tight. Keep it to yourself. I, I, just hold it for yourself. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ask yourself, why will one man steal $2 billion? For what? No, for what? For what? No, 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 no. They, they, they say some governors stole 20 billion naira. They stole. That's the one they were able to trace. Are you hearing me? And they are not satisfied with that. They are looking for more money. These people meditate so much on evil, there's no good thing in them. And it's so sad, unfortunately. That is what is killing Africa. They have their hands in occultism. Let me say this to you. A Christian has never ruled Nigeria. I challenge you. Go and find out. I'm not talking about those that say they are Christians. A Christian has never ruled this country. And the way we are going, it will take long before a Christian will ever rule this country. Did you hear what I said? A Christian has never ruled Nigeria. I just read now that Dr. Tunde Bakare has declared for the presidency. I just read. Watch the news in the next four weeks. The people that will tear him apart is the church. No, follow it. Follow it. He has declared presidency for president. The people that will start destroying him from next week will be the church. Go and read it. Listen, I will follow it. And I will update you. But true Muslims have ruled this country repeatedly. Including the world ruling now. True Muslim. It's a sad thing. But that's the truth. It's a sad thing. But it's the truth. No Christian, no practicing Christian has ever ruled Federal Republic of Nigeria till today. I want you to think. And think. And think. They are, they are fighting for Biafra. Listen. The independent people of whatever they are called, they are fighting for Biafra. The people that are fighting to liberate Biafra are killing Biafras. They are destroying the economy of Biafra. Does it make sense to you? You want to liberate the people, meanwhile, you are killing the people. You are destroying their businesses. You are making them to stay at home. You are burning down their fair cause. What kind of leader will you be if you become a leader? That is what is destroying Africa. So, Nigeria is even better for Africa. Sorry, Nigeria is better for Biafra than IPOB is to Biafra. Because the killing that's taking place in the southeast, Nigeria has not done it. What kind of people, what kind of liberators will, will burn police station? Kill people on the road because they, they fight the sit-at-home order. They kill them. You set a bus filled with people. You set it on fire. And you record it. And you say because they disobey sit-at-home sit order. Is that the way you will rule? Jungle justice. Would that be the way in Biafra? And you say that you are fighting. And amazingly, people that are educated, that I thought that are literate, they support Biafra. Without a cause. 
No, do you get what we, do you understand what is going on? Do you understand what is going on? They are destroying the economy in the southeast. They don't learn. Boko Haram has destroyed the economy in the, in the northeast. And now they are destroying in the southeast. And then the west is secured. If you are an investor, will you go to the east now? Will you go to the north now? Think about it! What is Boko Haram fighting? They are kidnapping Muslims now. First, they said they were fighting against churches. Now, both mosque and Muslim school, they are destroying. That's the way it begins. What is IPOP fighting? Who are they fighting for? A man that is hungry for power we rise up with nothing no track record no proven ability and then he said he's fighting for liberation of Biafra have you seen a freedom fighter carrying a foreign passport does it make sense have you seen freedom fighter carrying a, a foreign passport living abroad are they not in the bush no are they not in the bush freedom fighters no, Biafra own is flying with private jet. Open your eyes. No, open your eyes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to understand the word of God. You look at the people, you say, what kind of people is this? Read the book of Titus. Paul described the people. And Paul, Paul Come on, please. Just before we close, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, you know, you know, I will soon finish show. I will soon finish show because we are having a program. Actually, I should be the one saying that this service should finish early. Praise the Lord. I want us to go to verse 12. Titus chapter 1 verse 12. He's talking about he's talking about the Cretans, right? He says one of them a prophet of their own said one of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy glutons. This testimony is true. <laughs> Therefore, rebuke them what? No, do what? That they may be what? Sound in the faith. It's in the Bible. He said, one of their own prophets, one of their own prophets, said, Cretans are always what? Liars, evil beasts, lazy glutons. Shout hallelujah. Just because we are faith people does not mean that we cannot tell the truth. We should stop lying to ourselves. Tell yourself the truth. You need a change. Tell yourself the truth. You are stubborn. Tell yourself the truth. You are a glutton. When you eat, even the plate will salute you. Are you hearing me? We used to have somebody like that as a friend. He will visit us. You serve food for him and the wife. He will sit like this, move the wife aside. You will eat, 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 eat. The wife will just be managing and will be watching him. And the wife dare not touch the meat. You look, one look like this. You. Are you hearing me? The guy had a problem with gluttony. They call himself a minister. Amen. And the guy is writing some things, nonsense about men of God. This guy, the same guy. 
He's writing nonsense against men of God. When I heard about what he was writing, I felt sad in my spirit. Because him that is writing, his track record is terrible. People don't know it. When we were in the same church together, he was in the choir. He got one person pregnant in the choir. And he has to marry the lady. And when they married after a while, he left the lady. He was in the Bible school. He left the Bible school. He ran away. He didn't complete. And then people listen to things on social media without checking who is writing. They listen to him. I said, I said, this guy, he is writing about men of God. I said, may God have mercy on him. That's the problem with Africa. Sadly, I heard that the, the wife passed away last year. A young woman, we, are all, we all grew up together like from Revival Assembly. The woman passed away last year. And he is busy writing against men of God. Shout hallelujah. Don't follow what you don't understand. You hear somebody said something like this and you are following the person. You don't know the person's foundation. You don't know where the person is coming from. Just because the person says what, what sounds good to your ear, don't follow such a person. This guy, I know him personally. We know him personally. I one also in the same category. He married. He also left the wife because the mother said that the wife is this, this, He left the wife. A pastor, he left the wife. And you know what? The woman died. At the point the woman was dying, one of our friends, a captain, went to her and said, Sister, please, please, where is your Bible? I want to pray for you. Where's...? She said, I don't have a Bible anymore. And then those people will write something and put it on social media and people will read. Just because somebody comes out and says something nice does not make it nice. Some form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Paul said what you have received, what you have learned, what you have heard, especially the source that you have verified. He says stay with it. Don't go for what you want to hear. Go for what you need to hear. Praise the Lord. I will never tell you what you want to hear. That's my promise to God. Amen? But I will tell you what will change you. And if you listen to it, it will change you. Praise the Lord. Rise on your feet. Say thank you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Don't follow a useless course. Are you hearing me? Do not follow a useless course. Somebody said, we are marching against this. We. If you are not, if there is no praiseworthiness in it, don't march. If there's no truth in it, don't march. If there's nothing noble in it, don't march. Are you hearing me? Imagine me. Matching that so, so, so must be president, and then I carry a banner. You must be pre the stupidity of it at all. And then, where you are marching, mobile police came, they shot in the air, one useless bullet he hit you. When you get to heaven, God will ask you, What are you doing here? Are you hearing me? God said, What are you doing here? He said, Peter, ask him. Ask him. God forbid there will be a detention place for those that came ahead of time. He said, you have come to heaven, but go into detention. He said, because your, your room is not ready yet. You were not expected. Amen? They send you to a room without pillow. Without you on the floor. Some of you will think, some of you will say it will be better than Nigeria. That's what some of you think. <laughs> I know that's what you are thinking that at least you're better than Nigeria listen until when you compete with the house of those you know you are friends you are living in a one room no bed no nothing and then you see that ah you see that Michael is living in a, a duplex 
And here you are in a boy's quarter. No light. Nothing on the floor. You realize what you have done to yourself. Don't follow any useless thing. Amen. I don't follow anybody. I follow Christ. And the word is my life. I encourage you to do the same. If you be a follower of Christ, say, follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will. Follow me and I will. Follow me and I will. I want to be made. Shout hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, I will follow you every day of my life till the end. Lord, I will follow you. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Let's bring out our tithe and our offerings and our seed and bless the Lord and worship the Lord. Lift it up. Say, Father, I thank you. From today, I will spend time in the word, in meditation. The word is my life. I will dwell in the word all the days of my life. And Lord, I worship you with my tithe, with my offering, with my seed. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your blessings that is upon my life every day. In Jesus' mighty name, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, like I said, the, we have the flyers now. Praise the Lord. Now, we don't have so much, so there's no room to waste. You need to take and invite those you can. Don't go, this is not for you to go to the street and start doing like this. No, 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 no. This is specific invitation for specific people. Amen? As a matter of fact, when you give, take a name of the person. When you give, take the number of the person. Praise the Lord. Because we are serious with this. So don't just come and carry 20 or 30. Take what you can credibly share. And this one is not going on the street. It is going into the house. Is why going to the house, going to the office, and meeting the person, talking to the person, and inviting the person. Praise the Lord. And it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And it's going to be a glorious time. A wonderful time. Unusual time. Amen. So I want you to stretch forth your hand towards this and dedicate it unto the Lord and release it in the spirit and in the physical. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We call upon your holy name over this, Lord. We pray that this will be a messenger of hope. We pray that this will be a messenger of revival. Lord, we release this in the spirit and in the physical. We command it to go and bring people. Go and communicate to them. Go and minister to them in the name of Jesus Christ. As people receive it, they will respond. Lord, glorify your name. And therefore, we dedicate these flyers to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we have prayed. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, remember the information I gave to you earlier. The ushers will now share this. Remember the information I gave to you earlier. Um, Wednesday, Friday, Sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have three days praying and fasting. The entire church. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Wednesday prayer. The Wednesday prayer. Like I said, you can go to the micro church or you can follow online. But if you live around this vicinity, you can come. We want to do as much as we can. Monday, Tuesday to organize this place. Wednesday so that it can be ready for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Praise the Lord. But we must key into evangelism. 
we must key into evangelism. It's, it's important. And we know that by the grace of God, we are going to have a major breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, if just today is your first time of worshiping with us, somebody invited you, somebody called you, we'd like to, we'd like to meet you, know you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Today is your first time of worshiping with us. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Please, ushers, help them. Just take your Bible. Take your bag, ma. Please come to the front here so that as we share the grace, one or two of our leaders will talk to you just very briefly. Praise the Lord. Clap for them. Clap for them. We are excited to see you. We are happy you are here. Welcome to God's family church. And if you don't have a local church where you are, active we would like you to prayerfully consider to be part of this ministry because you are an answer to our prayer we continue to pray for god to bring souls into his kingdom and we accepted to have you and we welcome you in jesus mighty name shout hallelujah, hallelujah. now the ushers will now share the flyers to you like i said take what you can be able to and then there is also the e-flyer if you want the e-flyer, just go to the IT people. They will send it to you so that you can forward it to as many people as possible. Please, forward something that will change lives through your phone today. Amen. So, the ushers will do that. And don't just go and stand at Stalin Bank Junction and, be, and distribute it. And you say, you see, I just finished. Take it. Go home. Talk to somebody. Praise the Lord. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed. You will have a major breakthrough this week. This resurrection week will resurrect you. The hand of God shall rest upon you for good. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. As you attend this program this week, Heaven will attend to your needs. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you go, his presence will go with you. As you go, you will have peace like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your people. We go in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And everybody say. Let us share the grace together. May the grace. Us guys, a lot of God. So this speech. Amen. Surely, God goodness and mercy for your life. All the days of your life. I'll be special to you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.